Hey everyone, French Tutor here. Today's guide is going to be about Tauchi, a 4 star Havoc character who has many defensive mechanics as a tank, can buff your party member's resonance skill damage, and has high liberation burst damage. She was a heavily slept on character upon release, but she became one of the most valuable team members in patch 1.1 for Changli and Jinxi. Let's go over how to play her, her optimal flowchart, her best weapons, echoes, team comp, sequence nodes, and more. I highly recommend watching the beginning of this video to learn some basic and advanced tips on how to use her, but feel free to use the timestamps for your own needs. So yeah, let's get started. First, let's talk about her forte abilities. Tao Chi's 4-hit basic attack sequence is a standard 2-hit combo, followed by a 3rd hit that swings twice, followed by a 4th hit where she slams down her sword. The first thing you want to learn is to animation cancel after the 4th hit since there's a lot of end lag. The most common ways to animation cancel it is by dashing, using your heavy attack stance, using your liberation, using your resonance skill, or swapping characters. Her full basic attack sequence is very important to her kit because it regenerates the most amount of concerto energy. Also, basic attack 4 is pretty important to use when it comes to her stack mechanics, which I will explain more in detail later. For her resonance skill, Tauchi will inflict some damage, heal herself, and put up 3 shields, which are called Rock Steady Shields. These shields will reduce incoming damage by 15%. The damage and healing scales off her defense and has a cooldown of 15 seconds. Her resonance skill also pushes back certain enemies when cast. Her Rock Steady Shields also stay with the current on-field character to help with damage reduction. She can also parry enemies' attacks when you use her resonance skill right at the moment she is being attacked. I will explain more about this mechanic later, and also her resonance skill in general. Next, let's learn about her special heavy attack. When Tauchi holds her basic attack, Tauchi will enter the Rock Steady defense state. During this state, her damage is reduced by 35%. If you release your basic attack for less than 3 seconds in this state, she will do a normal heavy attack, which you won't be using much. If you hold Rock Steady Defense for 3 seconds, she will perform a Strategic Parry, which is a quick counter-attack that deals a short stint of damage. When she is hit during Rock Steady Defense, she will also perform Strategic Parry. The two other ways to perform Strategic Parry is using her Resonance skill right at the moment she is being attacked as mentioned before, and by using her Intro skill, but technically this is not an actual Strategic Parry, but it acts just like one, so I'll include it in this section of the guide. This special parry will knock back smaller enemies even harder. The actual strategic parry pushes back certain enemies when cast. You also gain a bit of concerto and resonance energy. Strategic parry should work for almost every attack in the game. There were a few instances in some events where an enemy's attack would bypass the parry, but I do not know the exact conditions for this. If anyone knows, please let us know down in the comments. Once strategic parry is initiated, you can perform follow-up attacks called timed counters by pressing basic attack. The number of timed counters she can perform is based on how many stacks she has. These stacks are called resolving caliber and she can gain up to 3 stacks on her forte gauge. Gaining stacks of resolving caliber is heavily dependent on her resonance skill. There are 3 ways to gain resolving caliber. 1. When the on-field character is attacked and you lose 1 shield, you gain 1 stack. 2. Using basic attack 4 to consume all current shields to obtain the same number of resolving calibers. So if you use basic attack 4 while you have 3 shields, you will gain 3 stacks, which is the maximum amount. And 3. When the rock steady shields duration are over, the number of shields are converted into the same number of resolving caliber. The shields last for 12 seconds. So it doesn't matter who the on-field character is when you get hit or when the shields run out. It will refill Tao Chi's forte gauge regardless. When you use a time counter and hit an enemy, it consumes a stack of resolving caliber and grants a shield for your party and you can see it by your HP bar. If you don't hit an enemy during a timed counter, you don't lose a stack or gain a shield on your HP bar. This HP bar shield lasts for 18 seconds and its strength scales off of defense. Once you start using time counters, you cannot interrupt the combo chain with different animations or you will have to do another strategic parry to use time counters again. So it's best to use all available stacks and use the maximum amount of attacks if possible. If you need to, you can slowly input and delay each time counter. This can be useful in very rare cases when you give enemies some time to approach you so that you don't miss your time counter and lose out on shielding up. The most common ways to cancel your last time counter is by using your Liberation, Resonance Skill, 
echo scale, dashing, or swapping characters. Compared to basic attacks, time counters gain more resonance energy but less concerto energy, so time counters are useful when you need a slight boost of energy to gain back your liberation. And finally, time counters are considered basic attack damage and the damage scales off of defense. Now let's learn some advanced tips. First, I want to show you something I like to call a rock steady cancel, a form of animation canceling. If you have been playing Tao Chi, you will realize there are times you need to hold your rock steady defense and wait for the entire 3 seconds to be up in order to cast strategic parry and use time counters. Now this can be useful when you are fighting one small enemy and they are the only enemy that can trigger your parry, but in most cases, this is not the best way in my opinion because you will be a sitting duck waiting for a long time for something to happen. What you should do is cancel your basic attack animations with rock steady defense instead. During your basic attack animations, hold your basic attack to cancel the animation almost immediately. Your Rocksteady defense should activate very smoothly for each basic attack and there is a large window enough so that you can parry before, during, or after a basic attack. Visually, it looks like the Rocksteady defense animation comes a little later or before an animation, but in reality, as long as you are holding your basic attack, it will cancel the hitbox of her sword and cancel the attack in order to use Rocksteady defense. This technique is especially useful against bosses with predictable attack patterns so you know when to stop attacking for a quick rock steady cancel. It's also great to use when you are surrounded by enemies. You do have to have some sort of awareness to know when you might be attacked from surrounding enemies so try to rotate the camera and look out for any oncoming attacks. Speaking of predictable attack patterns, let's talk about when is the perfect time to use strategic parry with your resonance skill. As mentioned before, there are a lot of predictable attack patterns in this game you can look out for, which can be great to initiate a strategic parry with your resonance skill. However, there's even a better time to do this. When you do a strategic parry with your resonance skill, you lose one rock steady shield and gain one stack of resolving caliber and you can perform time counters right after. However, if you started with zero stacks, you are able to use only one time counter, which is not ideal you will get a little bit of a HP bar shield and you won't recover that much concerto or resonance energy. The most ideal situation to parry with your resonance skill is when you have 2 stacks. This way, you can gain one more stack when you parry and do a full 3 hit combo, resulting in the strongest HP bar shield and recover the most concerto and resonance energy. Keep in mind that when you parry with your resonance skill, it doesn't recover that much resonance energy, so sometimes it's not worth going for. For comparison, when you hit an enemy with a resonance skill, you recover much more energy. Now here is one advanced tech you can use with strategic parry. After using strategic parry, you can actually cancel this animation and follow up with your liberation right away instead of using timed counters. This can be useful when you want to wait out a boss's long attack animations. Parry first, and then take advantage of your liberation's iframes and you should be untouched afterwards. I recommend using rocksteady defense for this tech. And note that this tech does not work with your intro skills parry. Just a reminder, if you are enjoying this video so far, please like and subscribe. It will really help me out as a small content creator. Thank you. For a resonance liberation, Tauchi swings her broad blade in a wide area for a large AoE attack, which is very powerful, and the damage scales off of her defense. It has an energy cost of 125 and a cooldown of 16 seconds. It hits an entire 360 degrees, meaning it could even hit enemies that are behind you, so it's best to use your liberation when you are in the center and surrounded by enemies. It has great crowd control capabilities by downing smaller enemies. Her liberation recovers a good amount of concerto energy, so it is important for every rotation that she refills her resonance gauge since Tauchi already has trouble refilling her concerto gauge. Make sure you have a decent amount of energy regen from her weapon or echoes. For her intro skill, Tauchi casts something similar to strategic parry and instantly gains 3 stacks of resolving caliber to do 3 timed counters. This special form of strategic parry can down smaller enemies and has more knockback. Her intro skill is a great tool to do some crowd control, attack immediately and shield up so that you can use your basic attacks in peace. What makes Tauchi incredibly valuable is her outro skill which buffs 38% resonance skill damage for 14 seconds to the next party member. This is definitely a meta changing skill so when they release more characters that rely on the resonance skill like Chang Li, she will become even more of an irreplaceable party member to certain teams. For her first inherent skill, Tao Chi's defense is increased by 15% when her resonance skill's rocksteady shields are up. They normally last 12 seconds, but at S3 they will last for a total of 30 seconds. 
Her second inherent skill gives 25 stamina for using strategic parry. Now before we talk about Tauchi's flowchart, we have to first keep a few things in mind. Her first main goal as a support character is to refill her concerto gauge as quickly as possible so you can buff up your teammate's resonance skill with her outro skill. As mentioned before, a full basic attack combo restores the most concerto energy so depending on the situation, you may be using 1-2 to two full basic attack sequences. And then your next goal should be to fill up her resonance gauge quickly to make sure you are using her liberation every rotation in order to fill up her concerto gauge faster. Performing a strategic parry plus 3 time counters restores more resonance energy than a full basic attack sequence. And using your echo skill with impermanence heron also restores a lot of resonance energy as well. And to restore both concerto and resonance energy, always try your absolute best to enter combat with your intro skill since you can start using time counters right away. Also, if you have the Broadblade weapon Discord, I highly recommend using it since it restores a good amount of concerto energy, and it's even better when it's refined. First, we'll talk about entering combat with your intro skill and using 3 timed counters right away. Now check to see if you have your liberation up or not. If you do have it up, use it right after your last timed counter hit. Then, use your resonance skill immediately to gain stacks and gain resonance and concerto energy. Then use your full basic attack sequence and gain stacks after you use basic attack 4. Now you can branch out into 3 options. You can keep using basic attacks until your concerto gauge is full. If you have the weapon discord, your concerto energy is most likely almost full so you can just do a few more basic attacks. And then swap cancel with your echo skill so that you can get more energy for the next cycle. Or you can shift your focus on shielding up for your next character by triggering a strategic parry with rocksteady defense. And finally, it's possible your concerto gauge is actually full because you had some extra concerto energy to start with, so you can just echo skill swap cancel after basic attack 4. If your liberation is not up after your intro skill and time counters, immediately use your resonance skill to fill up your resonance gauge and then you have a few options. If your liberation is up, use it. And then do a full basic attack sequence and gain stacks with basic attack 4. If your liberation is not up from your resonance skill, use your echo skill to gain resonance energy quickly. And then use your liberation. And then do a full basic attack sequence to gain stacks. If your liberation is still not up after your echo skill, just keep using basic attack until it is. After any of these scenarios, it's the same as before. You can either keep using basic attacks until your concerto energy is full, or focus on shielding up and look for an opportunity to use strategic parry and use timed counters. Now what happens if you don't enter combat with your intro skill? To be honest, the flowcharts mentioned before remain the same but at the end of a rotation, it's going to be extremely difficult to fill up your concerto gauge. So you have to either use more basic attacks or timed counters or a mix of both. This will result in more field time for Tao Chi and it is definitely going to affect your DPS with your main DPS. For her forte prioritization, focus on her forte circuit first for better shielding and then her liberation. Then her resonance skill, and you honestly don't have to heavily invest in her basic attack or intro skill too much. Since both don't scale off defense, it's harder to do more damage with them. I would only invest in her basic attack if you have her at S6. Now let's talk about her weapons. Check your inventory and see if you have this Discord Broadblade. It is her absolute best support weapon. It has an energy regen substat for its passive, and it lets you restore 8 concerto energy when you use your resonance skill. Tauchi has a pretty tough time filling up her concerto gauge as I mentioned before several times, so the passive remedy is that issue. The energy regen is also amazing so that she has better uptime for her liberation, which is also crucial to use to fill up her concerto gauge. But if you don't have this weapon, it's not the end of the world, because you can always use the free weapon Dauntless Ever Knight that you can find in the overworld. I'll leave a link in the description below of how you can obtain it. You can also get it from Gacha. It has a substat of defense, which will increase the damage of your skills by a lot, and for its passive, it increases your attack and defense by 8% and 15% respectively. The extra defense will help Tauchi do more damage and tank more compared to Discord, so this is your sub DPS option. If you are unable to get this weapon yet and just starting out in the game, feel free to use a Broadblade of Voyager or Originite Type 1, which are great starter weapons. If you truly want to focus on damage for Tao Chi and want to be on field for a long time, feel free to use any current 5 star sword. But I would only advise this if you have her at S6 in my opinion. As a support, her best echo set as of now is Moonlit Cloud Set. Go for a 4-3-3-1-1 build starting with the Impermanent Heron Echo. Try to look for a crit rate main stat. 
If you plan on heavily investing into her and use a crit rate weapon, go for crit damage. For early mid game, attack percent is fine too. For her 3 cost echoes, go for havoc damage. Some people say defense percent works well for her to get a stronger shield, but in my opinion, you can just focus on getting defense percent substats instead. As a bonus, havoc damage will increase your damage done by impermanence heron as well. For 1 cost echoes, go for defense percent main stats. For substats, focus on defense percent and energy regen, and then liberation damage. Basic attack damage is welcome too. If you want higher burst damage, prioritize liberation damage. If you have S6 and want to go for a DPS build, feel free to use the Sun Sinking Eclipse Havoc set. But you would have to choose between using Dreamless and Crownless. Crownless gives you more personal damage with the Havoc damage boost, so if you like bigger numbers, go for this one. Dreamless would be better for a quick swap team playstyle where you can quickly use your echo skill and swap out and have less field time for her. Now for teams. Remember to use any team you enjoy playing. I'll just be giving my suggestions. The original underrated free to play release team is with Chishia and Tao Chi. Most of Chishia's damage comes from her special resonance skill, which Tao Chi can boost. Also, Tao Chi's HP bar shield is always welcome for her when she fights close combat, which can be difficult as a pistol user. As of now, Verena is the best healer to work with for Tao Chi because she can gain Concerto Energy very quickly so that Tao Chi can always use her intro skill when she enters combat. If you don't have Verena, you can always use Bai Zhe. Now for the team that a lot of people have been waiting for is with Chang Li and Tao Chi. Chang Li's kit revolves heavily around her resonance skill, so it's an absolute no brainer to use her with Tao Chi. Tao Chi's HP bar shield is also a nice added bonus to Chang Li who will dodge less during her combos and rotations. Chang Li's outro skill boosts the next team member's liberation, so this is a nice addition to Tao Chi's already high damage burst. A team with Jin Shi and Tao Chi is also pretty viable since a good amount of Jin Shi's damage comes from her enhanced resonance skill. There are better teammates for Jin Shi, but if you enjoy playing Tao Chi, they can work pretty well together. A very underrated and fun team is with Sanhua, Tao Chi, and Verena. First, you would build both of them as sub DPS. Sanhua's Resonance Skill and Forte Circuit Skill Ice Burst will benefit from Tao Chi's Resonance Skill Boost and she can do some extra damage. And Sanhua's Outro Skill will enhance Tao Chi's basic attacks and time counters so they will have good synergy this way. Both can utilize short on-field time and can swap with each other quickly. Try this team out if possible. Now for Sequence Nodes. Tao Chi's S1 increases her Power Shift Shield, the one for your HP bar, by 40%. This benefits both Tao Chi and her teammates. Her S2 increases the crit rate and crit damage of her liberation by 20%, which is a nice damage bonus. S3 increases the duration of her Rocksteady shields from her resonance skill by 30 seconds. This is a pretty good boost to her kit, especially when you have more sequence nodes. For her S4, when Tao Chi uses Strategic Parry, she heals 25% of her HP and increases defense by 50% for 5 seconds and can be triggered every 15 seconds. This is a nice damage boost to her time counters, and if you finish your time counters fast enough, use your liberation right away for maximum damage. Starting from S5, you can start doing some serious damage with Tao Chi. The damage of her Forte Circuit, which is from her time counters, is increased by 50%, and each hit restores 20 resonance energy. This is actually an insane sequence note because you can restore up to 60 resonance energy, which is almost half of her liberation energy cost. At S6, Tao Chi's basic attack and heavy attack are increased by 40% during the duration of Rocksteady shields from her resonance skill. This makes her more viable as a sub DPS. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope people have fun using Tao Chi and she becomes more popular in use. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. I will be making more content when I am able to. Take care now.